Welcome and Happy Easter. This is St. Olaf Lutheran Church in the country between uh, Hartford and Oconomowoc. Welcome to the service Easter 2020. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Our Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, the beginning and the ending of all time and all places now belongs to him. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord is risen. By his wounds, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord will guide us and keep us forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord is risen. The light of Christ who rises this day in glory, scatter the darkness of our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your abundant blessing on us so that all who share in your holy mysteries be filled with your grace and new life. Once we were in darkness, but since we have become the Lord's people, we are in the light. Help us to live as people who belong to the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
light which the world tried to extinguish cannot be put out. Today we light the candles again, proclaiming the transforming power of God. As the light returns, we give thanks that God's transforming love has been, is now, and will be at work within us. Today we celebrate new life, new joy, new possibilities. Christ is alive and living among us. As we light the candles, we acknowledge that there is still pain and suffering in the world. But we place our trust in God and in the way shown by Jesus Christ. In the midst of darkness, there is light. In the pain of death, there is life. In the face of what appears to us to be overwhelming odds, God is at work in us and in the world working for justice and peace, compassion and love, and life abundant. Christ is risen in us, for wherever we gather in his name, he is there. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Easter morning services and our readings this morning come from the 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 8. Now I would remind you brothers and sisters of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received in which also you stand through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes from Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning, children. Good morning, Good morning Pastor. Pastor I'm so glad you could be here. Now I know some of you are missing today, so you are at home and I'm so glad you're with us as well. I miss the Easter breakfast where we can have pancakes and bacon and maple syrup from the trees uh, that we tap, all that good stuff. But um, I'm glad you're here with us now. Now, if you have a candle at home, some of you picked this up during the church service uh, weeks ago. If you wanna pick up your candle and matches, you can pause the video right now and then bring that back. Great. Okay, so as I ask people to take a candle and, and take it home, 
I wanted them to do it in a sacred space, a quiet place where they would meet with God, but also to put the candle in the middle of their kitchen table so that as they gather for, for a meal, that they would take time to remember what Christ has done for them. So maybe share about their learning of the devotion, pray together and share highs and lows. So again, at your special Easter meal, I invite you to share highs and lows and, and share what you appreciate about the service today. Now, there is a large candle that we often see in the sanctuary, and it's right here. It's called the Christ candle. And from here, we are reminded that Christ is the light of the world. But on Good Friday, when Jesus died, we blew out the candle that reminded us that for a time, things were dark. But out of that darkness comes a marvelous light. And so we celebrate that today, that Jesus is the light of the world. But what's really amazing is that Jesus then turned back to us as disciples, who he called apostles, meaning sent ones, to go be the light of the world as well. So would one of you volunteer, raise your hand, uh, to light the candle? Thank you, Tamara. All right. So good to have a helper. So there are many people who are going through tough times right now. Some people have lost their jobs. Some are uh, not well in, in their health. Um, others are going through just different, different stressful times. And it can hurt us. Um, so we need people who will encourage us and show us the light of Christ. And so what I'm going to do now is, here is, for example, your kitchen candle and be reminded that we all have a light in our home to remind us of Christ. But then, I want you to think of all these various candles that are being lit now, that we are Christians in this world, and that we are to be the light of Christ to the rest of the world, that we are to be kind, and loving and full of peace and joy and carry the light of Christ to all the world. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord God, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to celebrate you this day that you did die on the cross, but that you came back and rose from the grave. And because of that, we know we too will rise from the grave and that we will have eternal life and celebrate life with all our loved ones in heaven. We pray now that, Lord, that even in the darkness of this world and these difficult times, sometimes called dark times, that you would go and send us out to be the light of the world, to love the world, in Jesus' name, amen. There is a candle in every soul Some brightly burning and some dark and cold And there is a spirit who brings a fire Ignites a candle and makes his own Carry your candle Run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn, and hold out your candle for all.
to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Frustrated. See how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle and run to the dark. The lonely, the tired and worn, and hold out your candle for all to see. Yeah. Take your candle and go like your world. Take your candle. Whose hearts are blazing So let's raise our candles And light up the sky Praying to our Father In the name of Jesus Make us a beacon In darkest times Carry your candle Run to Days ago, we were in the upper room where Jesus was washing his disciples' feet while giving them a directive to remember what he will do for them, that he will give his very life for them and the whole world. So through the taking of bread and wine during that Passover meal, he lifted them up and that these represent his body and blood. We are to do this and remember Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. All for the forgiveness of sins. Then things move fast. From praying feverishly in the garden to his betrayal by Judas and the arrest by his own religious leaders. This led Jesus down a road from Gethsemane to Herod and Pilate to the shouts of crucify him, crucify him to an hour of flogging like animal bones ripping his skin off, to carrying the cross down the road of humiliation. His body catapulted up to the sky with two thieves taunting him, the king of the Jews, they say facetiously, our Messiah, miracle man, 
Son of God, Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world, breathed his last breath. His light extinguished. The tombstone rolled in front. Total darkness. We wait. The disciples wait. They wait, shaking and trembling with fear, hidden in the upper room. Just as the evening before, Peter denied knowing Jesus of Nazareth three times. I wonder how many times we shake our head no, or did not acknowledge knowing Jesus, when we could have been a witness to Jesus and his power to transform, enlighten, and heal. As Mark's gospel tells us, it was some of Jesus' closest followers from day one, that is Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, who brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll a stone away for us? from the entrance of the tomb. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place they laid him. But go, go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as I told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yes, that is Mark's ending to the Gospel. Wait, that's it? That's all Mark has to say? Are you kidding me? Mark, the guy who starts off his Gospel with these words, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? But indeed, Mark's version of the resurrection is surely disappointing. No appearances to the women or to the disciples to follow? We have to hear it from the other gospel writers, Matthew, Luke, and John, and from Paul's letter to the Corinthians we heard earlier. But let's try to work with what Mark gave us. I love this, that even though the women were filled with terror and fear and amazement, they were the bold ones to go and find Jesus and to honor him with a proper burial. Well, this bright, sunny Sunday, 2,000 years ago, became the turning point for a movement of God that would change and transform the world. Eventually, we know from other writers, Jesus would break into the upper room and say, Shalom. The disciples would cling to him, and they would be bewildered and empowered and sent to live out the Great Commission. No longer was the rabbi teacher's light extinguished, but it was shining for all to see again and through eternity. However, after Christ ascended into heaven, it all came down to his disciples. Their heart candles were lit. Now, through the Holy Spirit's touch, they too would go and share the good news of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has the power to heal, the power to forgive sins, and give life abundantly now and forever. They would go about the mission of lighting people's candles one by one. But that would not equal two. No, it would grow and spread exponentially, lighting up the whole world. Today, right here, right now, we live in a time of desperation. 
Many live in fear. Jobs and businesses are on the line. People may be strapped more than ever before. Some have lived the good life, only to stretch themselves too thin. They were able to bend for so long, but now they may break. This virus, though appearing to many of us not serious, is actually wreaking havoc for many. It always we think of health, such as body, mind, spirit, economically, politically. If the world is scared, still living in darkness, and if many do not know the shalom, the hope and light of Jesus, then we who do have one of the most opportune times to share what difference Jesus makes to us. It could be the difference between life and death. I'd like to conclude this message with something profound. As I mentioned to you, my old golf body, buddy in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Steve Smith, died a few weeks ago. He was skin and bones in his last days and had some mental illness issues as well those last several months. But then he met God in the most profound way. Yes, he believed in Jesus. That was clear. But this was amazing. These are the words that his lovely wife, Carolyn, wrote down. It's on Saturday, February 8th, 2020, that Steve woke up from an afternoon nap and said God spoke to him. These are his words. God spoke to me. It was amazing, unbelievable. Everything was amazing. Everything was good. He talked about what it was like in heaven. Amazing. Everything he did and everything that happened to us, he's still in it. He spoke it out. Bang, bang, bang. Everything he said happened. He spoke it. He and a couple of his friends, as Carolyn writes, perhaps Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it was all in my head. Sometimes I was standing by him. I never felt that way. It felt like he was putting me in God's hand. It gave me comfort. He talked about people we know. On March 10th, Steve's last words were, let me go. Give me freedom. Carolyn then prayed with him, and he became calm. Steve said, I can do it now. Please do it. Do it like you usually do. Let me go up now. Carolyn left the room to contact the kids. Please, God, please, God, take me. And he passed. Steve is worshiping his awesome God in heaven. He's with the people he knows and loves. His candle burned brightly on this earth as his faith grew over the last 10, 15 years. He sang songs to God. He led Bible studies with his wife in the Alpha Course, and he shared his love of life and Jesus with many. God is real. This isn't some make-up, make-believe religion. The time is now to claim your faith more boldly. Share the Lord with people who need the Lord, maybe more than ever. As Chris Rice sang so beautifully, go take your candle and light the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, one God, you God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, who believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. 
On this most holy day, let us pray to God for the church, the earth, and all in need, that the whole world may know the resurrection that God promises to give. Thank you, Lord, for allowing ways for us to come together virtually in this time, to celebrate together, rejoicing the great news of our risen Savior. Help us continue to spread the good news of your gospel well beyond the walls of our physical church by these new means. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Usually, it's sports figures and actors we look to as heroes. Thank you for holding up doctors, nurses, grocery clerks, and others as our new set of heroes. Help us to appreciate the risk that they face in serving on the front lines. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Please join me in praying for those from our congregation, William, the family of Diane Chapman, Chris Daly, Bella, Carrie, Kathy L., Andrew Schneider, Jim Monahan, Addie Craftsman, and also for those serving in our military around the globe and those who have returned home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We look to brighter days ahead as new cases of the coronavirus are starting to slow, and we see numbers of those recovered rising. Guide the doctors working on promising treatments for this illness. Inspire their creation of vaccines and remedies to protect and care for others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, encourage us in our quiet time. Meet with us as we open up to you in prayer. Speak to us through your words written in the scriptures. Grow our faith and strengthen our relationships. Help us to live more deeply with those in our families. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You gave us the rainbow after the flood. You bring sunshine after the storm. You brought Jesus' resurrection after the darkest day in human history. You give us hope in times of trouble as we place our trust in you to answer our plea, caring for your children. In the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the 
In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join, us, join in the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On our website is a Holy Communion Liturgy. Should you want to use that in your home, or a video, should you want to see what that's like. But otherwise, you can just join us here, break your bread together, and uh, use wine or grape juice, and uh, join in the Lord's Supper in your home as we uh, sing the Lamb of God. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Ministry Moments. Today, you can bring your non-perishable food items for the Ashapin Food Pantry and place it in the vans in the church parking lot. It'll be open until 8 p.m. this evening. I hope you're getting the daily pastor's notes. Uh, if you are not, please uh, let us know by email to me or to our church secretary, and we'll be sure to get those out to you. This week, we have our weekly prayer meeting via Zoom at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, our Monday small group at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom, uh, Tuesday a.m. men's group at 6.30, and then also searchers women's group 9 a.m. Tuesday morning again on Zoom. Recorded worship services. Please send these links of these services to your family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors. I know several of you have already. We have increased our worship attendance to possibly around 200 to 300 people watching per service. So God is up to something. Let your light so shine. We also will be making faith face masks soon, and we'll get that info to you on how you and your household may join in this important venture. Now receive these Easter blessings. Almighty God, who raised our Lord Jesus from death, lift you up and restore you to wholeness. Amen. Amen. The God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill you with grace and bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. is with you. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.